Today we're going to be talking about acid-base reactions. So acid-base reaction is a reaction in which a proton, H+, plus, so H+, plus, not only hydrogen ion, it's a hydronium ion, which is now called a proton, is transferred from one reactant to another. So acids donate the hydronium ion, so we call those proton donors. And bases accept the hydronium ion, so we call those proton acceptors. Now, when an acid or a base reacts with water, it will form a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Now, a conjugate acid is a substance that forms from the base after the base accepts the hydronium ion. And a conjugate base is a substance that remains after the acid donates its hydronium ion. Now, water H2O can act as an acid or a base because water contains both H plus and OH minus. So if water is an acid, it's going to become an OH minus at the end of the reaction, and we call that our conjugate base. And water as a base, it will become H3O plus, and that's a conjugate acid. Now here are some steps to determine if, an, if a compound is in fact an acid. Now if the compound starts with hydrogen, it's going to be an acid. But if not, if the compound has a positive charge, Overall, it's going to be an acid. And if none of those two happen, then therefore water, H2O, will be our acid in that case. Okay, let's go and do some practice problems of acid-base reactions. So we're going to complete the following acid-base reactions and identify the acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base for each reaction. So problem number one, whenever we do these problems, we first have to identify which of the two is going to be our acid. Now, number Number one, we do have H2O as an option, but that has to be our last resort. We cannot always assume H2O is going to be an acid. So if the other compound involved does not start with the hydrogen and does not have a positive charge, that is when water will be an acid. But this case, NH4 one plus has a positive charge, so this is going to be our acid. Therefore, water in this case is going to be acting as our base. We're never going to have an acid plus an acid or a base plus a base. It's always going to be one acid and one base. Now with an acid, they are a proton donor. They want to get rid of a hydrogen. So one of the hydrogens in the acid is actually going to go over to the water. Since, uh, since our acid is losing a hydrogen, it's going from four hydrogens to three hydrogens. So we're actually going to be producing NH3. But we have to look at the charges. Right now, our acid has a plus one charge, but we lost a hydrogen. Hydrogen has a plus one charge, so we lost a plus one charge. So there is no overall charge for our result acid. Now looking at our base, our base gained an additional hydrogen. So we went from two hydrogens to three hydrogens. But again, we gotta look at our charges. This compound water had zero charge, but we gained a hydrogen. So we gained a plus one. So our overall charge is going to be plus one. So now that we know what this is produced, we can figure out what our conjugate acid and our conjugate base is gonna be. Now our acids always produce a conjugate base. Since our acid produced NH3, NH3 is gonna be your conjugate base. Our bases always produce a conjugate acid. Since H2O produced our H3 one plus, that is gonna be our conjugate acid. And that is your answer for problem number one. So moving on to problem number two, we gotta figure out, our first step is to figure out which is our acid. Again, like I said, we cannot assume water is gonna be our acid. So looking at HF, HF is gonna be our acid because it starts with a hydrogen. So it's gonna be our acid. Therefore, water is going to be our base again. And remember, with an acid, we are losing a hydrogen. So looking at our acid, we lost a hydrogen, so what's left over is just fluorine. And looking at our charges, it does not have a charge, so we have zero. But we lost a plus sign. We lost a hydrogen, so our charge is negative one. Same idea, but for our base, our base gained a hydrogen. So now we have H3O. Water did not have a charge, but we did 
gain a hydrogen, gained a plus sign. So our overall charge is plus one. And then now we gotta figure out our conjugate acid, conjugate base. Acids always produce the conjugate base. Our acid produced F1 minus, so that's gonna be our conjugate base. And our base always produces conjugate acid and our base produced our second, our H3O plus one, so that's gonna be our conjugate acid. And that is your answer for number two. And finally, let's go in and look at number three. First thing we gotta do is identify which ones are acid. Well, neither of these are water, so we're gonna have to look at both of these. If something starts with hydrogen, it's gonna be automatically an acid. Well, our HCN starts with hydrogen, so that's gonna be our acid. Therefore, OH minus is gonna be our base. Remember, our acids are getting rid of a hydrogen. They're moving. So if we look at our base, our base went from one hydrogen to two hydrogen, but we don't write it as OH2. We actually write it as H2O. And we had a negative one charge, but we gained a hydrogen. So we actually have no charge now. And looking at our acid, we got rid of a hydrogen, so what's left over is CN. We didn't have a charge, but we lost a hydrogen, so our overall charge is negative one. And then figuring our conjugate acid, conjugate base. Remember, our bases produce our acids. Our base produced H2O, so that's gonna be our conjugate acid. And our acid produces conjugate base. Our acids produce conjugate base. So H, uh, Cn, our acid, goes to Cn, one minus, that's gonna be our conjugate base. And that is our answer for problem number three. So go ahead and do problems number four and five on your own. Pause the video and when you have your answer, press play. And here's your answer. Now, another type of acid-base reaction is neutralization reaction. And a neutralization reaction is a reaction in which the pH of the acid and base neutralizes to seven. So the acid and base reacts to produce water and a salt. And we know water's perfect water, pure water, pH is seven. That's why we get the word neutralization. All right, so let's go ahead and do um, neutralization practice problems. We're going to complete the following neutralization reactions. Now for these problems, we're going to be boxing all of our polyatomic ions present and we're going to do problem number one and number two simultaneously. When you noticed, we actually have OH minus as a polyatomic ion and ClO4 is a polyatomic ion. Then we're going to box all of our other elements individually. So we got hydrogen and chlorine, we got sodium, hydrogen, and lithium. Now this is reviewing when we did predicting products, where the outside boxes are gonna bond together and the inside boxes are gonna bond together. So we have the outside combining for our insides, outsides, and our insides. If you notice that we have H and OH bonding together on both of these problems. When you have H and OH bonding, it is gonna produce water, H2O. So with neutralization reactions, one of your blanks is always gonna be H2O. Therefore, your other blank is gonna be, we have to do our cross charges to produce our new compound. So looking at problem number one, we have Cl and Na bonding together. Our metals always have to go first. Na is the metal. So we have to do Na, and Na has a plus one charge, and we just said that's gonna bond with our chlorine, our Cl, which has a negative one charge. Cross our plus and minus, and crisscross our numbers. Now we don't write ones in chemistry, so this is gonna be producing NaCl. And then the same idea for number two, we have ClO4 and Li bonding together. Li lithium is our metal, so that has to go first. That is a plus one charge. And ClO4 is a polyatomic ion with a minus one charge. Crossing a plus and minus signs out, crisscrossing down our numbers. We don't write ones in chemistry, so we're left with LiClO4. And the last thing we have to do is our, is our states. Solid, liquid, gas, aqueous solution. Water is always going to be symbolized as a liquid. 
So the only time you're going to look at your solubility rules is for the compounds we cross charges for. So NaCl, according to our solubility rules, Na is soluble. Therefore, this whole compound is going to be Aq. And then the LiClO4 lithium, Li, is soluble according to our solubility rules. So this whole compound is also going to be aqueous. And that is how you do neutralization reactions. And that is it. Thanks, guys.